So hello everyone, thanks for being here. Um, yeah, so that's what I will present. Um, basically, some quick information. That's my Twitter handle, the company I'm working at. On the right, you see what we do. I won't say much more. Basically, also we are hiring in Zurich, Yona and Bern. So if you're interested, just see the booth. And yeah, we have cookies for real and art plays. You know where it is. Uh, that was for the sponsored part of the talk. Now, um, I'm basically working at this company for a bit more than two years. I've done lots of web app tests, pen tests, and that's a bit what I will present to you this morning. Um, apart from this, I'm the happy dad of three kids and husband since almost nine years now, so life achievement. And I also like lots of puzzles, games, riddles, and kind of stuff. This might show a bit in the presentation. Voila, let's go. Um, the idea of this talk was well, actually from uh, my boss. I said, yeah, well, we can do a talk at Rare 41. Uh, would you like to and present this stuff? And um, as a pen tester, basically what I want to do is find for fun the highest privileges I can get and for the client all the ways I can do that, such that he has all the material he can have to fix the most yeah, the most uh, issue he can. And since I'm on only a pen tester and not a red teamer most of the time, uh, I can be as loud as I want, as unstealthy as I want, that's no issue. And in this regard, I can use all the old, lame, easy, well-documented, you name it, vulnerabilities, path, escalation ways I want to. And that's very cool because, yeah, I just don't care about the stealth. I don't need three months to penetrate any, any cooperation. Just go in and use the tools, and that's perfectly fine for them. They know that. You don't need to use, uh, low, yeah, leave off the land, zero days or whatever. Just, yeah, do what needs to be done and get, get the, yeah, the fruit. Um, what you will see is all real anonymized examples that have been happening in the last two years. That's none of uh, the best or the most quick or whatever. That's just the one I've personally seen or that close colleagues have seen at other companies. Uh, they are ordered from, let's say, the least privileges required to towards the highest privilege you can get. Basically, domain admins, mostly Windows stuff and some mitigations are pr yeah, proposed as well. Voila, shall we go? Uh, first part, just when you have no access, like yeah, just the name of the company or some IP ranges from outside, what can you do? This is our obvious first go-to, because it works. Um, in that case, we had no real scope, just uh, a chisel saying, yeah, well, uh, I would like to show that my predecessor was not good enough and that we, that we need more budget and basically do what you want to the company. I just want to show that we're not good enough at security. So, yeah, standard phishing campaign, starting with email address collection from OSINT sources. So LinkedIn, basically, lots of scraping the websites of the society and, and more. And afterwards, we prepared um, some clone page that looked like that or something like that because this was present on the internet and we also collected from open source intelligence the IT manager and IT provider names this will have some importance afterwards and of course purchase the certificate valid such that you have the nice green lock in the bar and don't raise any suspicion and look like domain because again once more it works afterwards we prepared this mail or not exactly this one, it was in German, but I'm not so good at German, so this one is in English. Um, saying, okay, we've been doing an update, there should be no downtime for you, no whatsoever, but yeah, well, just check. In case you, you encounter any issue, please report to us to check, click on this link, use the sign-in button, and that's it. Signed by the IT department, so this is why we need this, this information. And afterwards, we send this to all the email address we have, except all the IT guys, because of course those may have some clue more than the other users, and we don't want to be detected so soon. Then you send this, you get creds, 
basically what the page does, it will store the credentials and redirect to the real page, showing then an error, but you don't care. Just use the tries again and it's fine. Afterwards, you get creds. And the reason we did that specifically for this company is because we found some kind of page that looked like that again. It was not Salesforce, but CRM online, no two-factor authentication. And we were lucky because uh, after yeah, some hours, someone entered credentials and this was a CFO or maybe some high HR related guy. So we had access to this with almost the highest privileges we could hope to get and get all the information of the company. So more than enough to do damage and show that security was, let's say, not so good enough. In case you don't have the CRM online, which to my from my point of view is already some kind of an issue, you could go for physical access, remote VPN, just see what's inside the mailbox. It's already enough to do some problems or fish from, yeah, for remote access instead of uh, credentials. Would work as well. And quickly mitigations. Yeah, well, not all issues are for users. You need to click, you need to open documents. So in that case, you cannot do much. You have security, best practices, disable macros, and so on and so forth. But at some point, user will click. But you can still raise awareness. This is very important. It, it will come back several times in the presentation. You may also want to avoid exposing your CRM on the internet, or at least add a second factor. Voila. <coughs> First case done. Now uh, we are allowed to go in. This comes interesting. What can we do here? That's the second case I want to present. Yeah, you probably know the, the acronyms and what you can do with that. Um, usually when starting a pen test, we start with port scan, vulnerability scans. Again, we, no, we don't need to be stealthy. Um, while doing this, it takes usually lots of time. This small nmap command is a quick win. It will just look for within your scopes or the targets for the eternal blue vulnerability. If you find this very good for you, you have a good start of a pen test. Uh, not so good for, good for the client. Um, in that case specifically, um, we had a whole network to assess. We could not scan everything. We found six hosts that were vulnerable. One was a domain controller, sad for the customer, but he didn't want us to exploit this because of course, yeah, you don't want to compromise your domain controller at once. And if by mistake the exploit crashes, then you're in some serious trouble. But customer is nice and he said, yeah, well, you can exploit something else and I will ask a domain admin to connect on this server such that you can get the creds. And afterwards, maybe just a quick question, who knows what this is? Mimikatz? Okay, so I don't need to explain. Uh, basically, I could get the creds with this very nice tool. And once the DC or yeah, the domain credentials were very compromised, we had no then to jump on other hosts and go further in the networks, but that's a story that needs to be told another time. Yeah. Um, mitigation for this one. Yeah, asset management. It seems easy, lame, but it's hard to do in a real company. It's yeah, you can do that. You should definitely. It's a very good start. But uh, we always find hosts that we are said afterwards, yeah, well, we don't know what this is. I have no clue. I have to look. I have no, nothing in my inventories. I have to find out what this is. And yeah, this leads to those issues of unpatched hosts. And for the credentials in memory, there are so-called anti mimicats mitigation starting in Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016. If you have those versions, you can definitely use those mitigations as well. Okay, let me just... Mm -hmm. um, maybe you know this, this kind of page. When you find this, usually you're just like, yeah, well, this is of no use to me. Uh, you can just try the credentials. In that case, it worked. Obviously, otherwise it wouldn't be here. Um, it was an old development server in a corner. No one knew it was still here. It was unmaintained and some developer just left the credentials by default on this Tomcat, in, Tomcat instance. Um, yeah, afterwards, the path is using Metasploit MSF Venom. 
generate this uh, this um, WAR file. Once you've done that, you can deploy this on the Tomcat console, and this will basically generate a reverse shell to your machine, and you get the shell. Afterwards, you may be lucky, as it was the case here, and the Tomcat was running a system, so you don't need to do more. You just, again, run Mimikatz, get the creds, and in that case, high privilege account, not domain admin, but still, you can go a long way with this. Um, if you cannot run Mimikatz because you have a nice antivirus or IDS IPS that would block this, uh, remember, you can just dump the ESAS process, get the file back to you, and do that offline. I once lost, like, probably in this pen test, by the way, like four hours trying to run Mimikatz on the server, where I, afterwards, in five minutes, I could just download the proc. And mitigations again. Um, yeah, again, assets management, again, awareness, security culture. There's no, yeah, no silver bullet here. Or at least I don't know any. If you do, please come back to me after the presentation. Next case is a bit more technical. It has been mentioned yesterday already in the Red Team talk from uh, Skip guys. Um, yeah, you may know what Responder is. When you read this on their GitHub page, it's kind of scary. All those acronyms, I don't know all of them. Most of them, yes. Um, so I figured out I will do a small explanation of how this works. Um, in a network, if you want to get the IP of an of a host name, you just ask the DNS server, basically, what's this IP for the host name I'm trying to query? But what if the DNS doesn't know the answer? You mistyped it, or it just doesn't exist? In that case, default behavior in uh, in Windows is to fall back to world protocols, those LLMNR, LLMNR and NBTNS, and multicast DNS. Good thing for the attacker, um, this is broadcast or multicast, meaning you will see it as an attacker if you're in the same broadcast domain or multicast domain, and you can poison the answer, saying, okay, that's me. Um, <laughs> I see some so the internal joke. Um, <clears throat> so basically, that's me, and the, the user or the computer will, will now try to connect to you, and in case you need any authentication, basically, Responder has rogue authentication servers on several protocols, and he will ask for the credentials to the computer, and the computer will comply, send, usually NTM, NTLM SSP hashes, more on this later. But, um, well, you need to wait until someone makes a mistake. This sounds like, yeah, not so optimal. Actually, you can do better, you can force your luck. There are several ways to make these requests happen. Uh, a an easy one would be to send an HTML email, and if the user clicks on load images, it will try to load something from this file uh, handler, and basically you can put anything as long as it's not in the DNS, it will fail the DNS query, then fall back and do the broadcast, and you get the connection to the responder. Same, some bad PDF attack was present, presented some weeks ago. I did also with SSRF in web applications. Works very well because it's repeatable, you can do it as many times as you want. And there are other ways. One was or already presented yesterday, this kind of SCF files. Basically, this SCF file is a text file plugged into any Windows directory, and it tells the Windows Explorer to use this icon for this, uh, for this uh, folder. And of course, the folder, the share does not exist, and we get back to responder. More connections, more ways to get hashes, and maybe more credentials at the end. Issue is that what you get with Responder is hashes, but not NTLM hashes. Basically, you cannot pass the hash with those. You can crack them, but let's hope your company have a good password policy and you cannot crack them. But you can NTLM relay. So that's one more step with Responder, or actually with multi-relay or another tool that, that exists. I would advise you to have a look at multi-relay or NTLM relay X. That's part of Impacket if you want to do more with that. How it works, again, we have the user, the attacker, and then we have any arbitrary target. In this specific pen test, we targeted the main file server, because if you can get access to this, you have lots of interesting data and lots of users connected. So the user will try to access anything that doesn't exist. So again, TNS, fallback, and connection to responder. Um, we open the connection, manage the middle disk, connect 
ourselves to the valuable target, which will send a challenge. This is falling down. And we propagate this. User signs the challenge or computer signs the challenge. We forward the challenge. This works very well. And the good thing is that once we have this authentication by default again in Windows, there is no need to sign the further messages. So basically now we can keep the connection and the user doesn't know about it. For him it fails. No issue for us. But we can go on and we don't need to sign any further challenges. So basically we have access with the rights of the user. In the best case, we are local admin on the server, which was the case luckily in this pen test. And in that case, uh, well, you get with multi-relay by default uh, some kind of shell on the server, not exactly a shell, but some kind of, and then you can again run mini cards, do whatever you want on the server. It's very nice when it works. It's, yeah, at this point it requires a part of luck. What would be best, there are tools that actually allow you to keep the connection open afterwards, even if it's not the local admin, meaning you could browse the shares on the file server using the rights of this user instead of yours. You might get more access, more files, more stuff to look at and go on, iterate this process as much as you can. Uh, mitigations here, that's purely technical. Disable those old protocols. Most of the time you don't need them, so you can just drop this and enforce SMB signing. There is, to the best of my knowledge, most of the time, no reason not to do that. It's not done by default. I don't know exactly why, but this would completely prevent the NTLM relay. Not true. It would prevent the SMB relay. You could NTLM relay to other protocols, uh, MSSQL, IMAP, LDAP, and maybe one more that I forget, but it would already prevent this most obvious issue. Next step. Basically, we go forward, we have more credentials, now we have maybe a user credentials or a workstation. Sometimes in a pen test you assume that uh, you will start as a malicious user, and in that case you get credentials, account, uh, yeah, well, workstations, all you need. Or just as um, malware that has compromised the station, and in that case again you get the station, you get some creds of the user, and you can go from here. What we do in that case, first step, is dumpster diving. Users has access to lots and lots and lots of shares. Um, the first ones, netlog on syswall, where some scripts are usually hosted. If there is any sensitive information in these scripts, grab it. It's a quick fix, uh, a quick win, sorry. Easy, easy to get. If there is passwords in the logon scripts, easy again. To do that, we have a custom bash script wrote, written by one of the guy in the assembly here. Uh, this can be done with PowerView as well, or other tools. Just use whatever suits your needs. And once you get, let's say, passwords, you can just iterate again. And if by chance you encounter uh, files, uh, sorry, shares that are writable, remember what we talked about before, these SCF files, you just drop them here and get more connection to the responder that is still running in the background. Again, increasing you the, the odds in your favor. Uh, this is not one case, actually. There are several, so it happens a lot in the pen test. You find many information in those shares. Here we have SQL credentials, for example. So server, user, password, just all you need to connect. Then if you're lucky, this is a system account again or some good account, then you can maybe escalate. This is out of scope for this talk because it's not for lazy people, and I usually don't do that. But you can find even easier stuff, domain credentials. In that case, some transfer user, uh, kind of admin. I can't exactly remember what this, what access this one had. But again, you get more privileges. You can go on in that case and find more. One current finding as well, disk images, backups. This allows you to go very quick again. Specifically here, uh, VMware files, you can download it or just mount it locally and then extract something from the SAM files and TLM hashes. In that case, those are the ones you can pass the hash with. So then, since you have the names of the server, it's very ni nice, it's ordered, you can just get the hashes, pass the hash to the server, gain local admin on the server, and if you're lucky, this works for several of them because they are reusing the same credentials and you can propagate that way. You don't need to crack this hash, you can just pass the hash. So basically, yeah, maybe who knows what is past the hash because I don't need to explain maybe. 
Okay, maybe I'll explain a bit. <laughs> um, passing the hash is basically using the NTLM hash instead of the credentials of the user, because Windows will accept this as an authentication method, so you don't need to crack the hash, you can use this just almost as a password. This works remotely, you can do that with several tools, or locally you can do that as well with other kind of tools. And by the way, uh, thanks to uh, Thomas Debis that presented yesterday, because in one of those pen tests, I used exactly one of the tools he presented, one of the compiled Python scripts, just to do exactly that. Uh, going on for the for the shares, you can find more. You can find user data. Yeah, we don't care as a pen tester. You can find salaries, passwords, as I shown, vacation pictures, music, film collections, backups. Yeah, lots and lots of stuff. Mostly not useful for you, but sometimes worth a look. Yeah. Okay. So I already talked about that. Mitigations here. Yeah. Once more, you see, raise awareness, security culture. Uh, who is putting those passwords on shares? Yeah, well, this one should know that it's a bad idea. Don't do that. Don't first don't hardcore credentials in script if you can avoid it. But then don't put it on shares where everyone in your company has access, or at least this everyone group in Windows. And for the yeah specifically disk and backups, you can limit this to administrator. No one else need to access those. There's no reason for this. Maybe an additional measure that would be interesting if you have some kind of tool, some script that would look for all the shares open to everyone in your company and grab regaps or whatever you want to look for sensitive stuff like passwords. Again, might be cool. You would probably get lots of false positives. It would require some tweaking, but might be a cool stuff to do. Okay. This one is maybe self-explanatory for lots of you. If you can boot from CD or USB uh, and that the disk is not encrypted, then you're already winning quickly because you can escalate to local admin. You can dump again this SAM file or more exactly the NTLM hashes that are presented in the SAM file. Or you could as well replace this utilman.exe executable here. Oh, no. Where, where is it? Oh, here. Uh, by this cmd.exe. Uh, some might remember this sticky key backdoor that was presented some years ago. This is exactly what it does. You replace this, and then when you boot the computer, on the login prompt, you can just type Windows U for the utilman, and the binary that will, that will be run by Windows as system is this CMD instead of the utilman. Basically, you get a shell as system on the login prompt just by clicking uh, Windows U. And then, of course, your system, you can do whatever you want again. Uh, by the way, I've presented some, I've written some blog posts some month ago that showed how many of those you find on the internet. Actually, in Switzerland, there were more than 100 hosts where you could do just that. Connect to RDP, do Windows U, or shift, 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 and get the shell. So it works. It's used in the wild. Yeah, well, as a pen tester, use it as well. It works very well. And once more, you can also dump the hash, pass the hash again, and you get access. Um, yeah, mitigation here. That's not rocket science. Uh, harden the BIOS. You should not be able to boot on USB and encrypt the disk. This is, I would say, mandatory, especially for um, notebooks. This one is encrypted. If it's not open and unlocked like that, it's basically a brick. You cannot get any data because you need a password and a token to unlock this. Oops. Um, this one is my favorite, as you've seen on the title slide. Um, custom tools and scripts. For the crypto people, it's exactly the same. Don't do custom crypto. Um, yeah, well, same for uh, uh, for the uh, for the security tools. Here, the there are two cases actually. The first one is this uh, hotline help tool that was very nice. It's a tool to give information about the computer that's presented in a nice way to the user, such that when the user calls the support, support can just ask, oh, well, please, could, go, could you go to this line and tell me what's written here? And the user doesn't need to do Windows, CMD, type IP config, and enter more information. Just read what's written here. Issue is that you had some kind of lines like that. Well, uh, sad for the, for the tool. Especially, much more sad is that this user was member of 
a built-in group in Windows called account operators, and that's what he can do. It means you can add any user to any group except domain admins. So you are admin of whatever you want, but not the domain. When you get that, yeah, it's only one more small step to get the domain itself. Next tool we encountered in this case several times, thus the level. Uh, yeah, this tool was designed to run binaries as administrator on a computer and it worked offline. So basically the idea is, okay, there must be the credentials somewhere in the tool. Sounds like a challenge. I said maybe before that I liked puzzles and challenge. So first easy bypass for this one. It was a colleague of mine. Yeah, basically you could write in the directory. So yeah, well, no use, just put something in a common line. In that case, it was something like net user, compass, some password, add, net local group administrator, add, and yeah, we are local admin. Okay, that was level one. Then sometimes later, we had a new pen test at this company or maybe hardening. Um, we had no right access to the directory, but the binary was still here. Although we said, yeah, well, this is a bad idea on the principle. Please think about that. And yeah, someone want to guess what's the next bypass? Not the compass guys, because you know that. Knowing that I come from the web world, what would I try? No. Okay. That's the bypass. Yes. And it works very fine. So same command line, you just put it somewhere else. Uh, add some dot dot slash. Uh, Worst thing is that they tried to fix it during the same pen test, very quick fix. So some stuff were blocked, but not this one. So yeah, let's say <laughs> cool for us. Let's go and do it again. Yeah. Next time, because we had lots of projects with this company, <laughs> they seem to like that <laughs> somehow. Uh, yeah. Uh, no write access, no path traversal. So this starts to be a bit less lazy, but that was not done by me, by a colleague. Uh, static analysis, .NET binary, no obfuscation, decompile it, see the password in the code. Okay, fine. And there is the last level. Uh, up to now, maybe we'll get more pen tests. I don't know, I would like that. I have more badges for the next presentation if, if I can do that. Um, yeah, again, code obfuscated, and in that case, I don't want to do either reversing stuff. I usually, first, I have no time during the pen test. I would like to have time and do that, but yeah, well, you don't do that. Uh, so I kind of bypass this this way. Monitor Windows API. There's a tool that works very well. So you launch the binary in the tool, and you monitor this specific API called Create Process with Logon W. And you run it, there is exactly, exactly one call to this API, and in the parameters of the call, you see the user, the, yeah, lots of information, and the plain text password. So we'll see next time if we go to them how we can do that. This should be interesting. Voilà. And, uh, yeah, only mitigation I see here is just to remove this, because yeah, basically you have the credentials in the binary. If someone takes enough time to analyze the binary, he will find them. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, and I'm really not so good at pen test reverse and so on. So, yeah, well, next time maybe I ask a colleague to do that for me. For, for me. Should work. Okay, um, I stated this already several times, and this was in a presentation. I found the image very telling, and actually not so bad for the pen testing. I don't mind being like Rambo and stuff. James Bond works well as well. Um, yeah. So we don't need to be stealthy. That's uh, mostly a presentation of this tool that I've been using successfully several times in the last month, years. Uh, Crackmap exec, it's described as a Swiss, uh, Swiss knife for post-exploitation something. Um, it does lots of stuff. I don't know half of it. Uh, look at the GitHub. This is actively uh, maintained by a guy called uh, Marcello something. Byte Bleeder on Twitter. I show the references, uh, the links afterwards if you want to, to have a look. Um, what we've been doing in that case, what this command does, is you specify the protocol you want to work it with. Uh, Crackmap exec supports SMB, MSSQL, um, LDAP, or 
yeah, some of those. But most DSMB is the most useful. Then you specify the target. For this, it's very flexible. You can have lots of formats. We'll see this later. The authentication you want to use, in that case, user password on the local computer. And this minus minus sum basically tells to dump this, the hashes from the sum files. So if the user and the pass are valid, you have local admin. It just does this remotely, just dump the hashes for you. Very useful. And once you have this, yeah, in that specific pen test, we, we had this access. We could just get the hashes. And then we did that. Uh, we sprayed. Because again, we don't need to be stealthy. We can do this on the whole network. Map exec allows you to do that. You tell the subnet you want to get, you use the user, you can use the hash, very convenient. So pass the hash again, this time on scale. Local auth, because password are reused, this works. And this comment will just specify to list the, list the currently logged on users. This way you can have a look at what is interesting and you can run the next comment. So you choose what's interesting, you put this in the file, specify this as targets. Crack map exec is very yeah, very flexible in that case. Even here you would miss the SMB typo on my side. But then again, user hash local auth, and you can do that. This is a module in Crack Map Exec. It's already built in. It has been updated like one week or two weeks ago to bypass AMSI on Windows. And this will run actually the, the PowerShell version of Mimikatz remotely, so in memory, no trace on disk. Kind of stealthy actually, but yeah, well, since you do this on a whole domain, you don't care. Uh, and it will just do this on every host, and you will get the answer. And Quackmap Exec is very cool for this because it has an integrated database and it will store all the answers he gets, so all the creds. Then you just use this tool, Quackmap Exec DB, and list all you have. For this one, I can't remember, but probably 50 to 60 creds, and then do whatever you want with this. Probably you should report. Um, yeah, at this point, when, when you've been doing that, you have so many creds that you basically don't need more. Uh, if you really want to go to the domain admin, there are some tools that can be used um, that help you win a lot of time. This would be PowerView and Bloodhound. This is a very nice project that actually builds a whole graph of the Active Directory and the relationship between the groups, between uh, yeah, some more, let's say, le less obvious relationships like ACLs, ways you can ex escalate, and we'll present you all of this in a nice graphing interface. You can do queries like, how do I do to get the shortest path from this user to domain admin, or which are all the users recursively included in that group, this allows you to do that very quickly. It should be first run such that you get um, yeah, all the data collected, then you import this in GraphDB, and you can exploit all the, da all the data you have here. Um, you could go one step further. Actually, this guy, ByteBleeder, developed two, no, one tool based on Empire. So Empire is some kind of post-exploitation framework where, um, coded in Python or PowerShell, I can't remember. It will deploy agents on the machines that you have compromised. And this byte leader has developed some tool called DevStar that will actually, base it based on Empire, uh, as soon as you can deploy an agent, it will connect back to DevStar, and DevStar will use actually the same kind of data as Bloodhound and try to automatically exploit this, put a new agent on the new host it can compromise, and iterate until it, it yeah, basically compromises the whole network. I usually don't use that because you never know where it will go, what it will do, and how it will end up. But if you want to try, it's probably fun to run in a network. Um, yeah, mitigation again, creds reuse. Uh, LAPS, I've mentioned this just in the meme here. Um, this is local administrator password solution. It's developed by Microsoft. It's really targeted at those local administrators to avoid having them being identical all over the network or all over the specific golden image that you've been used to deploy your stations. Uh, it will allow you to change the password regularly and use random, unique, strong, strong passwords. And this will be stored, as far as I can judge, securely in the Active Directory. And this way will basically remove completely this credential reuse, at least for the local admins. 
Then for all the rest, if your users are using the same passwords for their email, for their CRM application, whatever, then of course you're in trouble. But then again, awareness, security culture, no more trip, uh, tips here. And now since we have time, um, I have a bonus one. We call this internally print the trick. Um, we did this first with my brother like one and a half year ago. Uh, we basically found a web in, uh, printer with the web interface open and default credentials. So at first sight, nothing problematic. But this printer was a multifunction function, was allowed to do um, scanning to mail and scanning to file. And to do that, it would look into the Active Directory through LDAP to get all the emails of the users. So you could conveniently go to the printer, look for the user you want to send a mail to with the scans, and then it will just do that. But big issue here, the account used to query the LDAP was a domain admin. So when you see that, yeah, well, okay, this feels like, yeah, well, we should exploit this definitely. Uh, what we could do in that case, we couldn't export the configuration, or at least we weren't able to do that easily. Uh, couldn't read this as we would like to, but we could do that. We configured the local LDAP server. You could also use a responder for this. You change the printer configuration. Remember, we have access on the web interface. You say, when you want to query the LDAP data, you connect to my own laptop. And then you go to the printer. You say, I would like to do some scan to mail. And it will search for your, for your user on your laptop and sends you the credentials. Once more, uh, we have access to the admin interface. We can say that this is done in plain text, that this doesn't require SSL certificate, whatever. So yeah, you can just read the password in the in the TCP dump or in responder directly, whatever you, you prefer. So this one allowed for nothing to domain admin in one step. Very cool when you can do that. Not that often, sadly, or hopefully. Uh, quick recap about the mitigations. Um, that's all I've mentioned up to now. So basically security awareness, for me this is the most important stuff here because all I've presented today is easy stuff, low-hanging fruits, mistakes of people. Uh, that should be avoided at all costs because it will allow for escalation paths and in the worst case domain admin. So user aware awareness would help not for, yeah, would not fix completely, but would help for phishing, for these custom tools, for those passwords on shares, the credentials reused, least privileges, and so on and so forth. This is basically for everyone, not only for the users, for developers, for sysadmin, for your CEO as well, if you can manage this. This is very cool. Then assets management, as I said, it's not easy, but once you know what you have, it's very much easier to protect it. And yeah we always find stuff that is not known. And this is not only host, it could be an old modem that is lying in the, co in the corner and allowing connection, bypassing your whole firewalls and stuff like that. Just know what you have in your network. Then disabling what doesn't need to be here, this is basic security principles. And for SMB signing, this is not so hard to do and it will completely remove this um, SMB relay. And to me, if you can, if you have the infrastructure that supports this, just hardening and full encryption, sorry. Um, yeah, again, if you can do that, if your user will accept the extra burden of having to plug a token, put a password when starting the, the disk, it's definitely worth it. And I would say almost mandatory for laptops because as soon as you got your laptop stolen, lost, then someone could just extract the disk and read what's on it. If it's not encrypted, then you're done. You're, yeah, you're basically screwed. And finally, this Microsoft Labs for the credential reuse and local admins would, personally, it would be a, sh yeah, a sad situation on the network. It would, yeah, <laughs> uh, reduce my possibilities a lot or make it harder. Yeah, thanks for your help, uh, for your attention. Um, I have still this list of tools I mentioned here. If you want to take a picture, it's maybe the, the right one now. Otherwise, you probably can see the video. If you have questions, I'm right in time according to the network, uh, these small lights here. Um, please ask them now because afterwards I have to jump in a train. I go to a wedding this afternoon and I won't be lying around. Voila, thanks a lot.
Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, are there any questions? Anyone? We still have time. I would be sad if Alexandre doesn't ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> Not so bad. <laughs> Hi, thanks for the presentation. Um, have you run Bloodhound on any of your engagements? And did you have any bad things happen, performance issues or anything? Up to now, no issues. I've been running this three times, I think, up to now, in real engagement, en engagements after testing it locally. Um, no, no issue. Sometimes issues to get the sessions of the users connected on the on each host. This somehow, if I understood correctly, the the blog articles and the papers I've read, um, you query the Active Directory and it will just list the sessions that have been opened in some time span before. And this is not that long, so you should run it in a loop such that you get all the sessions back to you. But except from this, no, no issue up to now. Okay. Maybe and use the sharp pound. This is the C sharp version. It's very much faster and less memory footprint. If your environment is big enough, it will matter. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for the presentation. Um, in a long term view, is it more difficult or less difficult to get into a system? For example, in Windows 10, I saw it should be possible to get just into safe mode, click around a bit, and one gets also a root shell. I would say, personally, it's easier, because I'm learning a lot since some years, and then the more you know, the, the easiest it gets. But at customers, it improves, if that's the sense of your question. Yeah. So. Hopefully it improves. That's also why we do that. Otherwise, it makes no sense, and customer wouldn't pay for this if it doesn't improve afterwards. Okay, uh, another question. Great, uh, great presentation. Quick question: uh, Did you do any purple teaming with this? And if so, like how many defender tools spot the typical low-hanging fruit uh, attacks, and do they take action? Like what percentage, or roughly? Um, I've never done purple teaming, or maybe this depends on your definition. Uh, yeah, well, I would say I didn't do red teaming either, because for me, if you don't have a real blue team in, in front of you, that will really be dedicated to monitoring what happens, looking at the logs, analyzing this, developing tools for this, reading papers, doing best practices, and so on and so forth. It's, it makes, to my mind, no sense to call this a red teaming. So no, I've never done purple teaming. I've been caught at least one time, like someone just sent an email to the whole project saying, well, someone is running Mimikatz on our server. Uh, if you don't answer, we will uh, just isolate this server and be done with it. Yes, good for them. It's cool. It happens, but it's really not that often. So I couldn't say I've done purple team, no. Mm -hmm. I would like to, of course, I would like, but not yet. Thank you. Any questions? Nice. Okay, if nobody has any questions anymore, we can go to the coffee break. Thank you very much.